Hi, and welcome to this video. My name is Jesper, and today we'll be talking about App Volumes, and in particular, one of the latest features added to the App Volumes product. With me here today is Dennis. Dennis, would you like to introduce yourself? Absolutely. So my name is Dennis Sigmund, and I work at VMware as a solution engineer for the digital workspace. Thanks, and excited to have you here today, Dennis. Glad to be here. Like I mentioned, we'll be talking about App Volumes, which is a application delivery solution for uh, virtual desktop solutions like uh, VMware Horizon, which um, separates the applications from the operating system and adds application lifecycle management or uh, application on demand capabilities uh, in the process. But one of the challenges that organizations face at a larger scale is how to synchronize or replicate the different components that make up an application across those different sites. And those components are the VMDK, or VHD, depending on the format that you use to package the application, the metadata, which contains information about that application, the assignment, which in the end determines who gets what application, and the marker. marker which determines the state of the application, like retired, production, uh, or perhaps test. So, Dennis, could you uh, walk us through how the uh, latest additions made to App Volume solve these issues or these challenges? Absolutely, yes, friend. So, um, this year, in 2022, we added a new feature for multi-instance support. Um, so, let's start with the capabilities we had already before that. Uh, and that's the VMDK and the VHD. Uh, support. So I draw three different instances, and each instance could be a different uh, different site. So, for example, let's take that this one is an EMEA site, and this one is an uh, APEC site. Um, for the example today, we use this one as a source site instance or a package instance. Yep. Could be a production site as well, but uh, for this example, let's take that as a as a package instance. Um, so what we had already into the product, so we have an AVM, it's an Appforms Manager, uh, a SQL database, and a vSphere uh, component. And next to that, we have a storage location, which is typically uh, uh, NFS, but could also be something different. Um, so we could add some extra functionality to that, and we call that the non attachable storage. So, and this non-attachable storage is not used for uh, production to deliver the applications to the, uh, to, the, uh, to, the, to the desktops or the users, but it's used to replicate packages from this side over to the other instances. So from the instance, we create a new package. This new package will be uh, replicated to the non-attachable uh, storage location which is part of, uh, of the storage group um, towards the different instances. So this is uh, functionality that was already into the product before the latest releases. Okay. So with that, we uh, checked your first step. So if customers want to utilize this, Dennis, um, do they need to make any configuration changes or uh, do any updates before they can uh, use this in the production environment? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so this is, uh, functionality that was already baked into the product. Okay. So you don't need to change uh, the, yeah, your storage group configuration if you already have the non-attachable non in place. Um, so maybe to uh, add to the story as well is that this uh, non-attachable is also a read-only okay. uh, location. Yeah. What we added to the product in the 2203 version uh, is multi-instance support. And what we did with a new release is that we created a control layer which is able to synchronize over a lightweight uh, communication protocol, which is typically HTTPS on 443, but that's the default port. Uh, and we sync um, those three components. So the metadata, uh, the markers, and the assignments. So with that, we're now able to, uh, yeah, to replicate the storage 
or the DVMDK or the VHD file, but also the metadata markers and the uh, assignments. So if, for example, we create a new application on the package uh, instance, so yep. the source location, this will be uh, on storage will be replicated to a non-attachable storage group to one of the instances or both the instances, uh, and the the other data uh, with the uh, with the multi-instance support will be from the source to the different target locations. So these will be marked as a target. Um, and with that, we are able to, yeah, to, to replicate uh, all the data which is needed for, uh, for delivering application towards the different instances in different locations. That's great. I think that really simplifies running app volumes in a, in a larger multi-scale environment. Um, I've seen customers doing this by hand, uh, using third-party tools, API calls. Uh, there, there even was a fling out there. Yeah. Is that still viable? Yeah, the fling is not needed uh, anymore in this uh, uh, particular version. So f starting from 2203, um, this is all baked into the product. That's great. Yeah. I think that uh, in particular, because what you see with an app volumes instance is that it, it's bound to the SQL uh, database that it installed with. So getting that information to across different sites without doing any stretched SQL, um, uh, SQL replication or whatever, I think that really makes it a lot simpler to run it at a larger scale. It saves a lot of time instead of doing it manual or using a fling. Yeah, and doing it manually is also more prone to human errors. So Absolutely. You eliminate that factor as well. Yeah. So if you want to do this for a multi-site scenario, I believe you can also do this um, with something as a DTAP, right? Development, yeah. test, acceptance. Yeah, so let's assume that this, for example, is a production or UAT environment. Yeah. Um, what we also can do, and I will draw it pretty simple over here, but this is a test instance or a development instance. So we call it D or a T instance. Uh, and with that, we are able to use the same replication technology with the non-attachable to get the packages to the site. Yeah. Uh, but in addition to that, we can also leverage the new functionality to sync metadata. And optionally, you can also sync the markers or the assignments. But typically, if you look at a development or test environment, you will create, uh, you have different markers or you will assign the markers differently. Yeah. Uh, and the assignments will be the different. So Makes typically sense. the metadata and the, uh, the package itself is, uh, is only synced. Yeah. yeah, that absolutely makes sense. That's really interesting. So I already mentioned that uh, AppVoyums offers great uh, application lifecycle capabilities, but I think having the, the functionality to extend that to development, test, and acceptance environments um, really elevates that to a new level. Yeah, yeah we try to make it easy for the, uh, for the IT admins as well. Yeah, it's easy, it's scalable, it offers great manageability. I think it's a good addition. Absolutely. So that concludes this Lightboard video for today. Uh, if you'd like to know more about this topic, feel free to reach out to us using the contact details listed in the video description. For now, thank you for watching. Dennis, thank you for being with us here today and walking us My through pleasure. this video. Um, and we'd love to see you at the next video. Take care.